Hi everyone, uh, welcome again. Today's session uh, will be full end-to-end -end project in fraud analytics using Azure ecosystem, right? Uh, before we jump into technicality, uh, let's see uh, what fraud detection is, what is our problem statement, and what we are gonna be achieving in this session, right? So what we can say, and I, I'm gonna read it for you, um, the overview. See, for the past few years, there is significant worldwide increase in the unauthorized use of credit card. Um, when we say unauthorized, it means, you know, um, might be somebody cloned your credit card you know um and uh, sometimes the credit card has not been presented you know online wrongful online usage of credit card and number of things right so in order to prevent this unauthorized use it is crucial uh, to be able to infer the possibility of unauthorized transaction and to detect fraud from the transaction details right um, so we also uh, recognize that the prompt identification of unauthorized transaction is an urgent issue for the credit card companies and the financial institutions right they need to understand uh, analyze these trends for unauthorized spending for each time of the period uh, you know throughout the geography uh, for uh, for the unauthorized usage and learn how to concentrate on preventive measures right so this is your problem statement right not very fancy so it means on in, in a very simple terms we should have some mechanism by which the fraud can be prevented right and to prevent the fraud we should have first uh, a simple mechanism in which the fraud can be identified so let's take a quick example uh, without again uh, going deep into technical things so let's say you are user one right you are user one you live in let's say um delhi new delhi right um and uh, you spend monthly average around two thousand rupees right inr so this is your monthly spend uh, and your geographical area is around national capital region so it means you usually spend sometime in gurgaon sometime in noida and maybe sometime in let's say um, let's say uh, delhi right ncr and you are spending in limit of per transaction around 500 200 300 and you know it averages up to 2000 per month Suddenly, what we can see that your credit card had been used in Hyderabad. And uh, the transaction amount is, let's say, 20,000. So, what we can see that this is an anomaly. This is not your normal uh, usage of your credit card, right? So, what banks can do that okay guys this doesn't look like uh you know um a genuine transaction so they will call you and they will do a number of things so what i'm trying to show you here that based on two features or two uh fields what are those two fields uh city and amount you are trying to pick whether transaction is fraud or not fraud right so this is very simple because we have only two features or two fields on which we are planning to identify but let's say we have 40 fields like this 40 fields or 40 features right on which we gonna be predicting whether this is fraud or not so this cannot be done easily right and this is where um, ML machine learning will come in picture. We are going to be focusing on that later, but this is the gist of machine learning, right? What we are going to be doing in the session, let me draw it for you. So basically, we have um, three files file 1, file 2, and file 3. This file is your credit card, this is your city, and this is your into your area list means zero data list right and then we are gonna be um basically in this session we 
are not creating a machine learning model rather than we are using a machine learning model which has been created for us and we gonna be using that machine learning model i'll tell you tell about it later we have a code file called machine learning model right and it is again in the ADL, uh, adl as mentor now um we are going to be focusing first on your credit transaction file right so we this is your first uh, uh, file and this is a second file so what we going to be doing we using credit card plus ml model we are going to be predicting whether it is fraud or not fraud simple right and once this is done then we are going to be joining this data with your city plus your country to figure out in which geography geography your fraud has been occurred and we gonna be um, uh, dashboard dashboard this data in power bi right so this is your overall flow this whole work will be done in synapse synapse sql right so this is your overall flow so we gonna be using four files into your adls into and then we going to be using credit card transaction and machine learning model to uh, predict your fraud or non fraud and then we going to be joining again city with the city and location and we we will be doing some power bi dashboard everything i'll show up this step so don't worry so let's see how your data sources looks like so when i say data sources so there, there are three major files credit card transaction city and your country so let's see the data sources first so when we see your uh, data sources the first and the most important file is your credit card transaction right in this file we have around 32 columns right um, so we can download this file uh, from this url so let me go through this url first and then we will see when we go through this url what we can say that uh, the content of the file and, uh, is um, all the transaction done in september 2003 by european card card holders right so in this data sets there are around 284k transactions out of this 492 uh, 492 transaction are fraud so it means it is unbalanced file which um, 0.172 uh, of the total transaction are fraud right and the most important thing which i want to show you here is although there are 32 columns in this file uh, but since uh, this data is very uh, personal to the people like for example the credit card transaction might have your uh, um, phone number address right so basically to prevent gdpr so what these people did for us uh, they have process this file using a process called principal component component analysis right so so basically principal component analysis is a process by which we can reduce the number of features or we can um kind of uh, you can say mask the features right so let's say if you have a phone number whatever 9055668 so this is your personal information but this feature is not very important for fraud detection right mobile number so basically what pca can do either it can remove this feature or it can convert this feature into some numerical one right so this is called pca so what uh, it is written here that feature from like column from v1 to v28 are the principal component obtained with pca the only feature which has not been trans transformed with pca are time and amount so it means we have time and amount now what is time time is uh, you know let's say let me let me go to the uh, here again so we have 32 columns right from column 20 to 29 these are your pca transformed features right in which we like as a, as a uh, as a user we don't know what this column means but they meant something for your machine learning right now so and why it has been done because it is considered inappropriate to provide the original features 
and more background information about the data due to personal information uh, protection issues associated with GDPR you know which came in effect in May 2017 in simple terms this information cannot be shared so basically uh, we have all the information which is needed for ML or your machine learning algorithm but it is not presented in um, human readable way simple right the first column is your time right and time is a column um, um, which contains the number of seconds elapsed between each transaction and the first transaction happened in the data set. So on a very simple note, so let's say this is your data set. In this data set, we have let's say 100 rows. The first row time is one, right? So this is your first row and in the next row, how many seconds have been passed after this time so let's say this second transition occurred after three seconds so the time value will be four so it means the difference is three here so it means this time has been elapsed between first transaction and the consequent uh, or the you know, subsequent transaction right and the amount which is not PCA or it means which is not changed or transformed is the credit card transaction amount, right? Um, and uh, this one is the important thing is city ID. The city ID is a you know um, where the tra uh, this transaction has been occurring in this city, right? And then they have provided us with a class. Class value can be zero or non-zero. That is one. So zero means it is non-fraudulent and one means it is fraudulent and as we know the percentage of fraudulent transaction is very low 0.17 percentage and it's unbalanced data sets this is just for information right um, the second uh, file is cd file in cd file we have six columns the most important columns are your city id and longitude and latitude right so this city ID and this city ID will be joined together, right? And then we will map uh, um, both the city IDs and fetch longitude and latitude. And then we're going to be using this longitude and latitude to plot this transaction on map, right? So this is the funder. And then the last file is your country ID. Um, country ID will have, you know, your country name. Uh, numeric code location right and subdivision we're going to be using this file um, before we move ahead uh, so this is very important because anytime when we want to um, perform any data analytics we as a data engineer or data analytics a data analyst we need to understand the data this is the most important thing right now i need to cover basically this whole session will be revolved around uh, revolving around you know uh, your data engineering stuff so um, machine learning won't be covered in a lot of details here but let me cover what pca exactly is right so pca stands for principal component analysis right um, and it is the most commonly used for dimension reduction algorithm and machine learning dimension means again your features right um, so in this case uh, you know the credit card fraud detection data sets only uses data whose feature value have been extracted by principal component analysis it is considered an, an appropriate again the same thing has been written that okay due to gdpr right G due to gdpr we have uh, transformed some dimension reduce some dimension and we have transformed them so that you know um, the personal data cannot be exposed uh, outside right so how basically uh, feature uh, principal component analysis is done so basically uh, when we see here uh, look for the axis with the largest data deletion. basically when we see these are our data points right and what we see that this is your um, first principal component axis and when we are we seeing the same data points uh, in second component axis and then we merge together so basically we see uh, prince we do principal component um, uh, analysis 
for the x-axis y-axis we merge them together and then we you know shrink the three dimension into two dimensional and uh, the whatever the values comes that will be your principal cover analysis okay so i know it's confusing but i don't want to focus there the only thing which i want to focus is in reality your data looks like some something like this so you will have your time which we have you will have your uh, amount which you already have right but these things see this this important data if we have this data into your data file so obviously this is you know a uh, very uh, personal data right and it is not a uh, gdpr compliant if we if we share this data to do the experiment so basically we at least um customer phone number obviously it's very personal right customer credit card number uh customer name in, in fact customer name city name zip code and everything so basically what these people did they passed this data through your pca and then they converted these features so basically according to them there are 29 features like this and they converted them into v1 till v28 right v29 and uh, they rename them and they mask them so that you know this data or this v1 to v29 can be used for machine learning but it won't make sense to us um so this is your pca right uh, next thing um what i want to cover uh, basically this is again i'm telling you this won't be uh, this session won't be around, around machine learning but uh, i want to tell you which algorithm we have used uh, for fraud detection right so here we have used a um, uh, algorithm called linear regression right the machine learning algorithm that we used to do the scoring um, um, basically as 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 i was telling you right so we going to be using this ml model into your synapse synapse but in synapse we going to be focusing 100% on sql right so the question arises how we will be using ml model into sql right we going to be covering this question in 2 minutes but um, which ml model have been used here so linear regression is the machine learning model which we used here uh, and this linear regression is basically um, um, you know do it predicts a value based on some other value so let's say we have three values and we have we need to uh, predict for fourth value that's this is class so we will be inputting these values and we going to be outputting the class of class variable so these input variables right um um are called features right and this is what you call label okay so let's 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 see so basically um uh scikit learn see linear regression can be uh, used from n number of libraries so scikit learn we can use as a library from which we can see this uh, linear regression model um as the class for making prediction based on linear regression right so let's see what linear regression actually is so linear regression is a linear model uh, model that assumes a linear relationship between input variable so these values right and a, a single output variable right this value uh, more specifically uh, so we can say these values are variable x and this is y so based on all these variables we going to predicting y right so there can be multiple types of linear regression right if we are predicting um, only single output then it's called um, simple linear regression you know where whenever there is a single input x right and we are predicting single output y so this is called simple linear regression right and there when there is multiple input variable for example x1 x2 x3 xn and we going to be predicting a y value similarly to the case what we are doing we have around 30 features or 30 x variables and we going to be predicting whether this credit credit card transaction is fraud or not uh, so this is called your multi input variable linear regression right um on a very um, easy node or easy easy side so we will have all the data points so these are all data points right so let's say if we 
if we want to see um, if we want to predict the output value right so the whole uh, basics of linear regression is we want to predict a line in fact let me uh, color this so we want to predict a line which is closest to all the data points so ideally the best linear regression model is a line which is at the shortest distance uh, from all the data points right so for example if uh, your data points are here 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 so we're gonna be calculating this distance from all these data points and there can be multiple lines right so this is one line this is second line this is third line so basically we want to have a line which is at the shortest distance from average mean square distance from all the data points right so this is your linear regression um okay now the most important thing which i was telling you right uh, this point that okay we are using this linear regression right but um how machine learning works on a very simple note we first train the model right and then we will be use that train model to predict right so how it works so we will have your input file right this input file we will divide into and again i'm not jumping into machine learning but on a very high level we will be dividing into train data set and test data set right this is the first step now using this train data set we will be passing this to your ml algorithm let's say in this case this is linear regression when this uh, input train data will be passed through linear regression we will create a model right and then we will be through this model this is your let's say m1 through this model we will be passing all the test data and we will test the data so once the training and testing has been done then we will be deploying the model right so let's say let's say we deploy this model in your python using your scikit-learn library right and now we want to use this model m2 which is your final model into sql so basically um, there's no easy way to do it right so let's say if you want if you are writing some model in your uh, python pycharm or sorry in pytorch and we want to use that model in let's say scala right or let's say spark ml so what was going on that to use the model um, we need to write the same steps we need to train the model we need to test the model again and again in every platform for example in pytorch even though your model worked fine we need to do the same thing in the other platform let's say spark ml right so in again in simple, simple term let's say if you have two platforms one is let's say your pytorch pytorch and the second one is um, let's say uh, let me find a model for you which will make sense um, or let's say tensorflow right so let's say you have two uh, platforms one is pytorch and let's say this is tensorflow and you are doing a fraud analytics project so what you did you did n number of lines hundreds of lines to train a model test a model and you have created a model called m1 which is very good in fraud analytics and you have tested it you have spent you know let's say 20 days to build this model to test this model now another team in your company wants to use this model right uh, but they are using tensorflow now what is going on that they need to uh, write this model in tensorflow way in library and then they will be doing this whole stuff in tensorflow and then they will again create a model m2 in reality this m1 and m2 are doing exactly the same thing right but they again spend 10 20 days so what people thought you know this problem is very very common because obviously there are n number of models and number of platforms in which you can do the model development uh, but the models are not interoperable right so what researchers came uh, thought 
about it and they came out with the concept called ONNX right so ONNX is nothing but open neural network exchange okay so what they said that okay even though you created or developed a model in any language or any platform um, you can export that model into a common inter exchangeable way and this model is called ONNX simple right so let's say you did it into PyTorch you created M1 you converted it into ONXX and then let's say if you want to use uh, uh, TensorFlow right TensorFlow you can import this ONNX or model in TensorFlow as M1 and keep using it so this is the beauty of uh, ONS, ONNX right so let me read it for you ONNX is an open source artificial intelligence ecosystem of technology companies and research organization that establish open standards for representing machine learning algorithm and software tools to promote innovation and collaboration of AI sector right so basically first like the first version of ONX ONNX is called Toffee I don't know why they wrote this name but as far as I am thinking the Toffee is wrapped under a wrapper and this ONNX is wrapping machine learning model inside a wrapper right it was developed by the same people who developed PyTorch you know at Facebook um, in 2017 um, Facebook renamed Toffee to ONNX right and uh, and then gradually um, uh, Facebook and Microsoft joined the hand together and later it, it, it has been um, joined by IBM, Intel, AMD, Qualcomm and a lot of companies right um, so ONNX is a new standard for exchanging deep learning models right at high level ONX, ONNX is designed to allow framework interoperability right ONNX provides definition for extensible computation graph model uh, as well as in built-in operator for standard data types uh, okay in scikit-learn or sklearn we have sklearn-onnx which can convert your scikit-learn model to onnx right um, it's very simple uh, so basically let me show it to you here um, yeah so this simple line if you use in your cycle learn model it can be um, so basically convert hyphen sk learn and then you need to use your onnx and you can convert this like we, we are not going there but it's very simple that's what i want you to show so we have covered pca we have covered linear regression and now we have covered onnx why i have touched all these because we have our model we have our model uh, let me show it to you um, one second so this is your fault detection this is the resources csv so resources and now what i'm sh uh, showing it here that we already have your onnx model so it means what i will be doing now i will move this onnx model which behind the scene is doing linear regression and it has been trained and tested right and we gonna be using this linear regression onx model now the best part is onnx model can be used in any platform so the platform we're gonna be using is synapse analytics synapse sql and we will show you everything okay so this is the whole background about data sources problem statement pca machine learning algorithm onnx right um, 
so um, as i was telling you um, we gonna be using um, power bi to do all the dashboarding right and to to uh, use the power bi you need to have your uh, uh, you know power bi account created so let's do it so first of all let's go to this url uh, powerbi.microsoft.com right um, and let's go here enter what it is showing you that okay you can sign in so let me sign in and let me use another user so basically what i'm trying to show you here so let's say my email id is your hadoop tutor at gmail.com when i use this url so what it's showing that you cannot sign in here with a personal account use your work account and school account instead okay so now the thing is where i can get my school account so basically uh, there are two ways to do it obviously you can use your company account if they are having some power bi licenses right or you need to create your work or school account so let's do it it's very easy to do it right so you'll go here you will log into your portal.azure.com right then you will go to azure active directory right and then you will go to users you will say right now this is my user which i have already like this is my main user now i'm creating a new user right you will say here create a user um now let's say if i want to use analyst analyst right and uh, this one is name is let's say analyst again and i want you yeah let's say auto generated file um i will copy it here so i'll use it after some time right this is my uh, first password it will ask me to change it and then i'll say create okay so my user is successfully created now if i go to this user what i can say that okay the user name is analyst right and it is in the domain of on microsoft.com under my uh main user so basically so this is my domain now so this is my company or workspace or you know work domain now let's try this uh one more thing yeah let it be so basically let's copy this let's copy this and let's try to sign in here next it worked right it means the first step has been cleared now let's copy this password let's go sign in perfect it is asking for the current password i know this thing and let me create a new password right uh, so i have created a new password i will sign in uh, it will sign me in right and then it will it is asking me for the second fact what is the authentication let i am saying okay let let's not do it now uh, so my my power bi account has been created right so this is how you guys gonna be uh, creating your power bi account now let's do one more thing continue and let's say that i'm in let's say island and my number is 1234567 right and i'll say yes yes get started so basically it has created my power bi account successfully now what we going to be doing we will be creating um, so it will take only 2 minutes meanwhile so what we have done till now so let's conclude right so, so that we won't get confused so first of all um, we have created one user right to zero directly the username is analyst right the second thing is we have used this user to sign up for power bi right and uh, third thing what we going to be doing we will be creating 
a resource group right uh, using main account right main account means account which from which we have created this analysis user right and the next thing is in this resource group we will make this user analyst as the owner owner will be analyst right and then fourth thing what we're going to do is we will be logging into azure portal using analyst right and since we have already created a resource group we can see a resource group from this login as well right and we will be able to uh, create resources in that resource group because obviously analyst user is there, right so obviously I, i'm not thinking this will be super clear to you but one thing which i need to make clear that why we are going to you know so much stuff, why can't we just create a power bi account or you know we can, we can create resource group from a main account right, from a main user so the simple answer for that is we need to create a power bi workspace right and we need to use this workspace in power app analysis so the condition for using a power bi workspace in snaps analytics is that we need to use same user who has created this workspace should be the owner uh, of the synapse analytics workspace obviously power bi has a workspace then synapse analytics has a workspace so this workspace can only be visible in this workspace if they have the same owner simple right so i think things are making this statement will make things clear so let's go to azure portal now um so what i have done here when i go here power bi and obviously this is your analyst uh, user when we go here oh yeah one more thing before i move here to create a space in power bi you need to be pro license user right the basic free license will not permit you to create your workspaces right you can have have only one workspace my workspace and that cannot be used here in synapse analytics so the condition is you need to use pro license yes uh, pro license is paid but for 60 days trial it's it will be free right so what i have done i have created so basically when you see here you have now all premium features we have given you access to all premium features for 60 days so i have created a you know like temporary uh, uh, what i can say pro trial account right and i have signed up for it when i go to workspace i have created a workspace called fraud analytics test and i have created this workspace using my analyst user so till now we are clear right so this step is done this step is done now let's create a resource group right and we need to create a resource group using my main user the user from which we have created this analyst workspace correct so i'll go here at home i'll go to create a resource group um not a resource um resource group right and let's say we are calling this resource group as um fraud analytics rg right and let's say we are creating this in hdos uh rest everything let it be like this so once the validation is passed we will create it okay resource group created now let's go to resource group let's go to iam access control and let's do one thing let's add a user add a role assignment right and uh, let's make owner and let's add the members um 
we need to use uh, add user group or service principle yes we need to add a user which user we need to add analyst one let's go to select review and assign right and uh, adding role assignment is going on role assignment has been done so now when we go here uh, and uh, now if you see i'm still logged in with my main account now what i'll do i'll go here right and what i'll say sign in with different account which account i need to use i need to use analyst one so i'll go here and it will ask me okay because obviously i have already signed in once so it is not asking me for password it's already saved into my browser but you can see here that now i'm trying to sign in using analyst at rajput nilayan on on microsoft.com okay i don't want to go for second factor authentication let's skip for now now i can see that i am in analyst at whatever account right now let's go to home go to resource group and we can see that we the, the resource group what we have created is available here and i will be the owner now let's see so i'll go here um and i record access denied let's ignore this for a one minute um resource group and let's go for access control and view my access okay that's good so basically what i want to show you is that i'm logged in as analyst and i'm the owner okay and let's minimize all these and let's go to our resource group and uh, let's create a resource uh, what which resource we want to create synapse analytics as um by nap sorry yes azure synapse analytics right um we'll go for create perfect we want to create in this resource group right uh, it will ask us um manage resource group workspace name let's say we want to call our workspace as ws fraud and analytics right it's good name should be nick yes we are good let's say we are creating it again in east us in the same resource group which in which we have created our um, um resource group account name we can create a new account name so basically this account name or this storage account will be linked with your uh, synapse analytics okay so let's create this uh, let's call this as um cc credit card fraud f r a u d fraud um storage account sa okay that's good and inside this uh, storage account which container you need to create so let's say i want to create a new container files because obviously i need to store my raw files here okay and then we will go next in your uh, synapse analytics you will have your sql pools right or sql user um so this is the sql user which we going to be using so they are asking us which password we want to use use any password which will uh you know uh follow their principle right password creation principles okay so we are good here now i don't want to go for networking and all let's say review and create um okay let's yeah so it will cost 4.22 euros per tb okay and then we'll go for create okay it will take some time um so let's wait for it it is in deployment in progress so deployment will take around 2 to 3 minutes okay uh, so account sorry uh, synapse analytics uh, has been created right so deployment has been completed and uh, so when we go here so one thing so let's go to the resource group right and in the resource group we can see two or three resources one should be your uh, workspace for fraud analytics that is your synapse workspace the second one is your um, fraud 
uh, service uh, storage account right so let's first go to your um, uh, synapse analytics workspace okay and what we're gonna be seeing here um, we can see two options obviously open synapse studio and read documentation we'll go for synapse studio it will open a new URL uh, which will be like you can see here it's a new uh, URL dedicated for your synapse and it will ask me for login which user we want to be using for login obviously the new one what we have created through uh, AAD as a active directory that's analyst and then I'll skip my second factor authentication and we are in synapse analytics workspace now okay one thing which I will be showing here is how to integrate your power bi uh, this workspace right fraud analytics test workspace into your um uh, synapse analytics workspace right so the first option what you will be getting is three option ingest explore and analyze and visualize so i'll go to visualize and now the good part is since we are using your an analyst user for both power bi and uh, power bi workspace and synapse workspace so when you go here in the default directory you can see fraud analytics test that is the same workspace here so now i'll go here and say create okay so the workspace for power bi has been integrated with your a fraud analytics synapse workspace so this is well and good right now the next thing what i will be doing i'll go home again and i'll go to your resource group right and i'll go to this storage account now in this storage account we will have a container right which we have already created the container name should be files correct i'll go to files and i want to upload all the source data here right so the source data will be your uh, yeah these three source data right city country and your credit card so i'll go here and say upload one more thing which i want to load here is my um, pre-trained machine learning model right in o and an x format so i'll go here in resources uh, and i'll say please load my o and an x model which i will be using to train um, to predict my fraud analytics right so the all the files are very small like my o and an x model is 1 mb uh, country list is 4 kb you know city list is 5 mb but credit card is 100 mb so it will take some time okay so meanwhile let's do one thing um, let's go to your fraud analytics again right um, and let's explore few things right so when we go for data here what we can see that okay nothing has been you know we cannot see anything into workspace correct and when we refresh we are not seeing anything uh, there's no sql data lake nothing right when we go to linked we can only see oh this this is very important and i really wanted to cover this section so when we go to linked although we haven't integrated you know your adls that means your azure data lake right still it is integrated because obviously the account what we have created uh, when we were creating your synapse workspace uh, we have mentioned that okay your uh, workspace fraud analytics which is your you know um, synapse workspace when we drill down here we will see files here right when we uh, click files we can see all the files what we are uploading so obviously the one file is still uploading here which will take maybe one or two more minutes but we can see all the three files right um, this one thing the second thing is your uh, um, power bi account uh, just give me a second so this is your data and uh, just it should be somewhere here uh, manage and then 
your uh, Mm, just give me a second. Basically, what we can see now that all the files have been uploaded. Let's validate one more thing. So when we go to develop, right? Uh, and in the develop, what we can see that we have a Power BI uh, workspace uh, with the name Power BI workspace one. What we have created, right? It has been created successfully. Why it was not showed earlier? Because when you create a new any new uh, uh, what we can say. Uh, artifacts into your synapse analytics you need to publish them so that they can be visible so i forget to publish them but yeah i publish the all see the publish all button has been disabled because there's nothing to um, uh, publish now and we can see here right so we have uploaded the data we have created the workspace into power bi and we have integrated that workspace with your synapse analytics right so now let's do some uh, you know uh, data exploration right um, so obviously we have the data into your synapse now let's do one thing when we go here i have created some queries right uh, let's do one thing before we okay so let's copy this first i'll say copy the query and in fact let me copy everything so that i do not want to copy again and again i'll share this queries to you guys don't worry uh, so let's copy till here okay and let's go here into data and uh, let's go here uh, develop okay and uh, what we want to create we want to create a sql script and let's paste it here we can name this sql script as let's say our uh, ingestion script okay now we want to create the schema right we want to run this all the all the all the queries right but what we want to do before that we want to uh, create our dedicated sql pool now how to create it go to manage right go to sql pool go for new uh, what we can see here that we have a built-in sql uh, you know serverless sql here already but we want to create a dedicated sql pool um, let's start from very basic that is your dw100c right it will cost 1.27 euro per hour um, and let's call this sql pool is um, dedicated sql pool okay let's create it and let's create it so it will take some time now um maybe they see five to eight minutes okay so let's wait for that okay so now uh, our dedicated sql pool has been created right uh, and it has been online now so we have to way we have two ways to run our queries now one is built in which is your serverless and one is dedicated which we have just created now let's go for develop again right and um, when we go here we have already created our ingestion script like we have copied it from somewhere right and when we go here we will use now dedicated sql pool right first of all let's create a schema called synapse right and let's run it now let's go here and which database we need to use we have two databases here right and uh, when we refresh it now when we go here let's refresh it uh, dedicated sql pool refresh yeah so just give me a second yeah so the database has been selected properly yeah so now let's create okay so now the next thing what we are planning to do we have created one schema now we need to create the object into the schema but on a very high level what we are planning to do we have three files into your blob storage or into a data adls right now we want to connect these blob files into and we want to query them using sql right so let's First of all, uh, when you want to connect your uh, um, ADLS, first we need to create your master key. So let's create a master key and let's me give you the password as test 
at one two three four five six right now let's run the statement so it has been run successfully query successfully executed now uh, we will be using uh, this uh, uh, we will be creating a you know a scoped credential for our storage account now let's go to storage account correct um, storage account and let's go for your access keys right um, so obviously these are very sensitive information uh, but i will be deleting everything once this video is completed um, so then you need to go for show key first of all you need to copy the storage key account storage name uh, and you need to paste that here right to create your um, um, scoped credential you need to give it a name right and then you need to give it identity and now you need to copy the key one right the first key and you need to paste it here so this is done now select this and run it so it will take one second and it's done now now the next thing what we want to do is your storage account name obviously we already know our storage account name we need to paste it here right and then your container name what is your container name files correct and let's and we are using credential is equal to your scoped, uh, scoped credential which you have created so this one okay now let's run this so this is done as well now what we want to do so we have created a master key we have created this scoped credential we have used that scoped credential credential to create our data source and the name of the data source is csv data source because our we have all our files as csv now we need to create a file format now when we say we need to create a file format we need to tell the system what exactly uh, files looks like you know what is the uh, field terminator what is the delimiter how many rows we want to skip you know so this kind of thing so we have two types of file one is your data file right uh, which are your city country and your credit card transaction information and second your onnx file that's why we have we are creating two csv file format here so we are naming one file format is csv file format and another one is csv okay so let's select both and run it mm, yeah so like two file format have been created now now let's do one thing um, using your file format using your uh, data source we need to create a external table right in which database in your synapse database which you have created like your in your synapse schema which you've created uh, earlier so now we are creating a table external table right which will be um, giving some structure to which file to your credit card dot csv file so let's go here quickly so that we can relate so we have into files folder we have a, a file called credit card dot csv now when we go here we are referring this file here right and the good part is we have already created a csv data source and csv file format uh, in the earlier steps now we know uh, into this uh, external table external uh, credit card table we need to give the structure and the data type to each and every file uh, every column of the file okay so let's create this so this will take only two seconds now the next thing what i will be doing is to create um, for external table or the table for your model so we will be naming this table as your model ml model external and then what we're going to be doing we are referring to the location of credit card model dot o and an x dot hex which is stored here right and uh, we will run it in this model what which file format we are using csv1 like this one in which the terminator is comma uh, string delimiter is you know space date format is not applicable and use default format is false so we have created it now 
Now the most important step. The most important step is use that ONNX model which you have um, registered as an external table, right? As model external. Now we need to select this ML model external into some variable uh, and then we need to use the SQL predict command uh, to, to predict whether the transaction is fraud or not. Simple, right? So let's do it. So first of all, what we are doing? We are selecting model from this table which we have created. Select model from synapse.ml model external and we are storing that into uh, variable, right? And now we are using predict command and in the in predict command we are passing this model example right and we are using that external credit card table which we have created uh, two minutes back and we are uh, using this model and using the credit card table what we are predicting we are predicting a output label and we are calling that as uh, so basically we are calling this um, um, uh, the output of this query is output level okay so let's run it so let's run it and let's see so yeah so now this will take some time okay so let's wait for it so the query took 32 seconds right so now what we need to do uh, let's go to data again right and let's go for workspace and let's refresh this so what we can see here that we have a SQL database created. Now let's open this and the dedicated SQL pool is the database name. In that dedicated SQL pool, we have tables, external tables and a lot of resources. So ideally, in this external table, we should have some tables, right? And we can see that we have two tables. One is your external credit card table and one is your model which we have used, right? And now, what we have done at the end of this we have created a table called credit card in this credit card table we have used external credit card table used our model to predict uh, the output and we have named that column as output label label right uh, so let's go to table again now what we can see here we have a new table created called select or oh, sorry uh, synapse got credit card. Now let's do one thing. Uh, let's create a new script, right? And let's see how this table looks like. Okay, so it has already written a query for us, right? From your table. And now let's see the data. So obviously, this table, credit card table, will have all the columns of your external credit card table with a new column called output label right so this is well and good so it means um, our prediction has been done so the main thing which i want to focus here that as a data engineer right even though if you don't know um, your uh, machine learning and all you just need to know uh, you need to delegate um, the machine learning uh, responsibility to the data science team and ask them or even guide them that okay guys do all the machine learning stuff create a O and NX model and give it to us and rest we will take care right now let's do one thing um, let's go here um, and into develop right and let's go to your Power BI workspace. Now, see the magic now. So, we have already created a Power BI workspace one into that Power BI workspace. What we need to do? We need to create a new um, Power BI datasets. Okay, so let's go for Power BI datasets. Let's click it. Now, here, what I want to do, I want to create a new Power BI dataset based on your um, uh, credit card table information, right? The new table work we have created we go here and which uh, so when we go here just one second yeah so it should be um, yeah so I'm not sure why it's not working but what I'm 
trying to show you here that I want to use this one and close and refresh right uh, new database yeah this one so basically I have stored this oh, sorry just one more second which I forget I want to publish it all first of all right let's say SQL script it's not a mandatory but let's do it and uh, so basically when I'm creating new power BI data sets let's try once more uh, download uh, data source let's try it ideally it should it should ask me some information but it's not asking but let me try it okay so it is opening that report for me it will uh, open it will try to connect to the database but before that we need to uh, so but what it's saying please wait we establish a connection with your fraud analytics sql uh, you know synapse one so now here i need to go for database right and then we need to use the same uh, user what we have created when we were creating our uh, synapse analytics was a sql admin user right and here i need to use the same password what i've used and i was creating this purpose space And I'll say connect. Maybe later. Okay, so what I can see here, um, this is the best part, right? So since our workspace and synapse has been connected, so when I created the Power BI data set, it has exported everything um, from your synapse analytics into that uh, data set file and now which table I want to use let's say I want to use this one credit card one and I'll say load okay and uh, I'll say import and I'll just ignore this for a minute maybe later okay, let, it, let it get loaded you know and uh, hmm. so we'll take some time because it will it will be loading around uh, 200k records right 184 maybe i'm not sure let's see it will load 486 one 486 records okay 486k oh sorry 284 sorry so now this has been done so now we'll say i'll just say don't show me this message again and i'll say close and then I'll go for the data tab. In the data tab, we know that this particular column is integer. It means number of seconds time elapsed between the first transaction and this one. And what we'll do, we'll call this number as decimal number. Right? And, and now what we'll be doing, we will be sorting this number in ascending order. Cancel it. And we want to sort this number. okay just give me a second sort ascending so it's done now let's do some visualization right so we'll go for visualization and uh, let's say we want to plot everything into your um, clustered column chart so we'll click it here right so it, it came here now in this chart what we want to do we'll go here and on the x axis let's say we want your time so we'll put it here right in the values we want to plot the amount uh, one second we'll put it back here and bring the amount field to the values okay and uh, it will come up now obviously this is this graph is showing me all the amounts whether they are fraud or not right but we want to see only fraud so we'll go for class and we will add this on the filter page 
right we don't want to do any uh, advanced filtering but we will we will go for basic filtering and as we know that one means fraud so we'll go here and we'll see fraud now what we can see here that this graph is showing you your all the frauds being done in in this 492 cases uh, and the uh, time between those frauds right now let's do one thing we'll save this let's save as and uh, let's save it into your documents or anywhere you know let's create a new folder your uh, power vi and enter into that folder sorry even let's say new folder only we will name it later right so we'll say fraud detection report let's say right detection and r should be capital and we'll save it so now this is done so we have created our one uh, first power bi report now next thing is uh, what we can do we can publish this so it's working on it it's for saving it right so meanwhile after the it has been uh, saved we'll publish it now to publish it um we need to log in so we'll say this particular user uh, in fact let me do one thing uh home i want to copy that user right so i'll copy that user from your ad and uh, i should have that user here yeah this is my user right and i'll go here and i'll say paste continue and and then it will ask me for password and i'll say this one and i enter my password I'll say sign in. I'll say I don't want to do the second factor authentication, and then it will be asking me which workspace you want to publish it to. I'll say I want to publish it to my fraud analytics test workspaces where which I created, and I'll say select. So it will be publishing it, my right? It will be publishing it to my fraud analytics uh, fraud detection workspace. So my report is getting published now, right? so till now we have done some basic analytics correct so now let's move ahead and do some advanced uh, analytics okay so it will take one or two minutes to get published meanwhile let me go back to my directory here and i'll say close and refresh if i say here power bi reports will be showing in some time uh it will take some anyways right so now let's do one thing now we have created basic power bi uh, dashboard we have published it now um let's try to do one thing we have um three files there right the first file was your credit card transaction which we have used to predict the fraud transaction or non fraud transaction now let's try to join your city and country with your credit card transaction and at then let's try to plot them into your power bi workspace right uh, create a dashboard so let's do one thing um let's uh, go for uh, mm, in fact let's create some link servers first um so let's go for manage then link service so what we have here we have your all the default link services for example your synapse analytics adl as one which we have used you know uh, in the beginning now let's create a one more link service what we want to connect here we want to connect from um synapse right we'll say continue um let's name this as azure synapse only and let's use my uh, subscription my server name 
is this my database name dedicated sql pool uh, that's good sql authentication i need to use i'll say sql admin user and the same password what i have created um, and as first test the connection so it should be tested successfully yes and i'll create it right uh, this is good so now now go to your data tab again in the data tab in the data tab right go to your sql database go to your database go to the tables and now this is the main table which want which we want to um okay so first of all what we want to do we want to write this table back to your um, so right now this is in your uh, sql uh, dedicated sql pool right it's in your synapse analytics workspace so what we want to do we want to write it back to your um, adls right so let's do it using data flow okay so now we are creating a data flow let's name this data flow as your data flow cc correct and let's name this your data set um data set is your you know let's say dedicated sql pool one dedicated sql pool right because we are using it from here um this is good everything looks good none and then we'll say create it okay so a new data set is created now in the first in in, in in any data flow the first one is source so let's say we are calling this source as credit card source right credit card source and we let's minimize this so that we can have enough space here we cannot put spaces that's okay and we want to create a new data set right okay so when we go here uh, and here right so we can see here that uh, your linked service should be the linked service what i have just created right this one azure synapse analytics and the table should be your synapse.credit card correct um so this is good and uh, let's test it perfect everything working fine so now let's go to your data flow cc and now what we need to do we want to select everything from this table so what we'll say sorry we need to delete this uh, delete and now um, we want to select everything from this table correct and we will say select cc we this is very simple we are skipping the duplicator and we, we don't want to do anything here we just uh, we'll just keep it simple now the most important thing is we want to store this back to somewhere and that's called sync correct into that sync uh, so let's say we will calling it uh, sync cc correct and sync cc is yeah incoming stream is select cc it is coming from select cc and it is getting to sync cc that's okay and uh, then we want to do one thing see here so we don't have any data set correct um, so what we'll do we'll create a new data set and uh, let's create a new integration data set where we want to store the data because this is sync so we know we want to store the data to adls gen 2 we'll say continue which format we want to store we want to store it into delimited text that's okay continue and now which service we want to use let's say i want to use a new service um a azure data like storage and i'll name it as link service that's ls right um authentication should be my account key fine uh integration runtime is automatic run uh, auto resolve ir 
I want to use my subscription here. I want to use my uh, CC fraud essay. Correct. And I I don't want to use any advanced parameters. I'll say create. It is creating. So it will take a minute and I'll say, okay, now where do I need to um, store these files? Where do I need to store these files, right? So it's simple. I want to store them in um, file system name is, let's say files, inside files. I want to create another directory, let's say credit output and I'll say, okay. Okay, so credit output is not found. I won't. Okay. Yeah, so it is done now. So I have created a new data set called delimited text one and everything looks good, right? Um, one second first. Uh, so this is looking okay to me. Uh, just one more second I need to test. Oh yeah, so we know that first row is our header. So we need to remove the header, right? Uh, because we are storing, we, we are uh, copying this from the tables. So first row will be header. Now we'll go to SQL CC again. So now we have our source. We selected everything from that source and we are dumping everything to the ADLS into files folder, right? So, and uh, now what we need to do, we need to start this debug. So it will take, oh yeah. So when we start this debug, it is asking me for the resources, uh, debug time to live. And I'll say, okay, keep everything default, you know, use the core four plus four driver cores, right? And I'll say, okay, it will take some time. Um, it will take around two to three minutes, right? Meanwhile, um, uh, you know, we'll wait for two to three minutes and then we'll come back, right? Okay, so the debug has been completed, right? And one more notification which came in between is um, cluster is ready, session ID is this, and your data flow debug has been completed. It's green now. So what we can say that the workflow or the data flow what we have created has been validated and debugged successfully. Now we need to do one thing. Uh, we need to run this data flow so that uh, the the data can be uh, you know read from your credit cards table and it will be uh, stored into your adls now to run the data flow what we need to do we need to go for integrate right and then we need to go for create now what we need to do we need to run our data flow in a pipeline so we'll say create a new pipeline correct and in the new pipeline what type of pipeline we need to create we need to create a move and transform pipeline and in that transform move and transform pipeline, we need to run the data flow. Correct. And in that data flow, let's say this is our data flow for credit card. Correct. Um, and let's do one thing. So everything let it be like this and go for settings. In the settings, which data flow you need to run? You need to run your data flow CC. So this data flow you need to run. Which integration runtime? Obviously, the default runtime I'm using here. Everything uh, should be remaining the same, right? Let's validate it once more. Uh, so this is good. Basic general purpose core count is okay. Staging folder, yeah. So what we can do here, we can give a staging folder. Uh, staging folder means uh, the folder where all the staging files will be stored. So I'll say files and create one directory called staging. Okay. And uh, parameters, I don't want to do anything. I want to do now, um, I'll go here and I'll say debug it. Requires a staging servicing link, right? Uh, one second. Um, settings okay let's do one thing uh, let's minimize everything this oh yeah this one sorry i missed this part right so it will need a staging link service so obviously we don't have any link service what do you do i'll go create 
a link service staging link service and uh, let's name this service is link service staging uh, and what we want to do here is uh, create a link service which will be um, authentication method should be your account key that's fine as your subscription is this storage account is this right and uh, let's test it and uh, connection is successful so we have created a link service to your ADLS gen 2 should be and so this one again Hmm. and I'll test it testing should be successful yes and I'll create it so our linked staging service should be created um, and it will take only less than one minute okay it's done and it has been created now let's minimize it and let's debug it okay so now what it is doing for us it is running that data flow um, which is reading from credit card predicted output and it is storing that into your uh, here so when we go here into your storage account what we can see into your containers uh, we can see here that there is uh, nothing here right uh, so this is your staging so when we see staging database has been created it means it is working right um, so let's go for overview again and even let's go back and go to files so we'll wait for two minutes right staging has been created so in the staging yeah something is going on right it is creating some snappy parquet files and it is hot inferred you know the file size is increasing so it means we are in the right direction and it has been running okay so let's go here again um, yeah so it is successful correct so it is successful now what I need to do I go to files yes so we can see we can see two files one is your success files right so you know how um, these things works right this is your uh, status file and this is your output file so it is 101.24 mb now let's do one thing uh, i'll go for data again okay and uh, i'll expand this and uh, i'll go for linked i'll go for files again so in this files obviously we can see a new files here i'll go one thing i'll right click it and uh, let's do one thing first yeah so i'll do one thing here i'll just rename it and i'll say this is my credit card output just to say just to don't get confused right dot csv okay so this is good so now the output file has been changed correct so now what we can see that we have four files city country credit card raw and credit card output correct so now what we need to do here and if we see this output file right uh, preview so basically it is nothing but the output of the table see output label id and everything class is there so it's just a copy of that uh, table now we will go for develop again right and we will go for sql script but this time we will be using our serverless infrastructure right and to use that i'll do one thing now i need to create a view and in that view 
I need to link all the files which are on your ADLS, right? So what I'm doing here that, okay, uh, create a view with credit card information with their longitude and latitude information and um, tell me all like connect it with all the files. So I'll refresh it. And uh, first of all, I need to see the location of your credit card output file. So I'll just copy it and I'll paste it here. So this is my credit card output file. So you know that okay in credit card file output file there are around 28 plus like 32 columns, right? And now we need to go for city list. So we'll go here and uh, we'll go for city list and then we'll copy the location and then we'll paste it. Right, same thing we'll do for the country list. Right, and uh, before that, I want to do one thing. Uh, mm, I want to create a database first into your um, serverless infrastructure. Right, so we'll say create. Sorry, control Z. Now do one thing. Create database. Right, and I'll let's say name this database as uh, Synapse, S Y N A P S E, Synapse underscore serverless. Okay, and I'll just run it. So this is done. Right, it will take three seconds. Correct, and I'll remove this. And now I'll refresh this here and I'll say use this database. Correct. And I'll say run this query to create the view. So it will take the query has been successfully executed. Right. And uh, now let's do one thing. Now the most important thing. So obviously we'll publish them all so that the changes won't be lost. So when we go for publish all, we are seeing few things data sets. Um, data flows, SQL, and let's publish them all, right? And let's do one thing. Go for your data sets. Now, what I want to do, I want to use this view and I want to plot longitude and latitude uh, so that I can see where frauds are happening around the world, right? Um, so I'll go for Power BI data sets again, right? And see the fraud detection report which I created um, has been uh, like has been published here right now I need to create a new data set but now this time which uh, connection you want to use I want to use synapse serverless one so I'll go here download and let it get downloaded and then I will open it But this time to open it, uh, we like previously we have used database uh, um, authentication method, right? This time we will be using Microsoft account authentication method. Let's wait for two minutes, then I'll show you. So it is establishing connection between your Synapse sequence, and it is ask it will ask me for the password and all. So I'll say okay, use this Microsoft account one, and I'll say sign in. Okay, which user we want to use? Obviously, analyst one, which I've created. I'll say password and I'll say sign in. I don't want to do the second for the uh, sector, second factor authentication and I'll say connect now. So ideally, I can only, I should be able to see that view here now. Yeah, perfect. So this view I want to load, right? And I want to import it. So it will take some time. Let's wait for it. 
and then we will plot it so what it is doing it is waiting for ws like fraud analytics your serverless synapse serverless right and let's do one thing uh let's validate it close and refresh manage and your sql pools i'm just saying you know they are online right and then it should be it should be working then um it is taking some time so let's wait for it okay so now it started uh, importing the rows uh, there was some issue with the connection right uh, so what we can see now that credit card loan and lag that's longitude and latitude view is loaded successfully now let's do one thing let's go to data first um and the one most important thing which i want to show you here is when we expand it right so we have two columns one is longitude and one is latitude so let's go there and we need to change the format of these columns so um not the format we need to sum uh, change the summarization so we don't want to sum them right because they are individual columns so we'll say don't summarize and this is latitude the data category of this column should be latitude correct now same thing see the icon has been changed so it is now you can see the globe icon here so it means it is latitude now same thing we will do for longitude we'll say don't summarize and then we'll say make it as longitude so the icon will be changed here see and now let's visualize it so now to visualize it what we're going to be using we're going to be using uh, gis maps and we'll say okay into this uh, gis maps we want to obviously use the longitude and latitude columns so here we will be putting first latitude correct and then we will be putting here latitude longitude sorry and then the size of okay so basically longitude latitude done and now we're going to be putting size of the bubbles in the maps should be based on your amount and the color should be based on amount as well right so what we can see here that something is going on like it is in processing so let's give it two minutes so now what we can say that there's so so like we can see so many bubbles there so the the thing is these all bubbles are based on the amount but we don't know which of these bubbles are frauds right so we're going to be adding the filter again as we have done in the previous exercise um, so this filter should be based on the class so we'll go here and we'll say add a filter on this page which type of filter we want to add we want to add the basic filtering and the filtering should be based uh should be filtered only fraud one right so what we can see here now let's minimize everything okay so this is your final output so and when we maximize it so what we can see there's a lot of fraud happening but one of the major flaws are happening somewhere here you know so this one you know at this longitude this latitude you know um, this much fraud happened like 1335 dollars right in near rome this much fraud happened so we what we can see here that okay uh, fraud are happening across uh, all the countries but major frauds what we can identify here is across you know uh, rome or maybe bulgaria budapest so this is how it going to be doing right it's going to be working now let's do one thing uh let's save this again file save as and we'll we say fraud detection uh with location right let's do this thing save let's do one thing let's uh, once it gets saved let's publish it as well so it will be working on to saving it yeah now i'll say publish it to where to my fraud analytics test workspace right and 
everything is done so the whole project has been has been completed now right so let's conclude quickly uh, in a new notebook so we have done Four files, your credit card, your city, your country, and your OLNX file. Right? What we have done in the first step, we have created a steps analytics worksheet. Right? And in that step analytics, we have created uh, ADLS. In that ADLS, we have created directors and all. And we put these all files here, right? And in this step analytics process, we have created a dedicated SQL pool, right? And then um, using dedicated SQL pool, we have created uh, you know master key, uh, like scope, external data sources, external tables for credit card file. And then we have used this ONNS model to create um credit card table um and like we have created a external credit card table which will be pointing to the credit card table and then using O and an X model we have inserted the information into a new table right the table is called credit card table so, using this credit card table we have linked this table to uh data power bi right and next uh let's see what we have done we have dump this credit card table back to the ADLS and then uh, we have defined this uh, of credit card output file this is and then we have used power BI to do some visualization again uh, to see the fraud um, with longitude and latitude okay? so this is a whole exercise right and basically we have done this joining using um, serverless pools correct so now the last step which is very important uh, which we don't want to forget right so go for your home go your go to your resource group and go to your resource group and delete the resource group right so now just copy the name control V and delete it now one thing is your develop uh, yeah and power bi data sets so we'll refresh it and we can see that okay see power we have two uh, uh, data sets here fraud detection report and fraud detection with your location the great part is we can create a new report here and we can do all the visualizations here you know so this is the best part of synapse so we can do all the data ingestion data integration data visualization data cleansing everything in uh, synapse so i think guys this is all for today it is a i know it was a long lecture but i i i think it will be you know helping helping you guys to do all the hands-on and to create this end-to-end -end project you know um so this is all for today Thanks all for your support. Uh, do subscribe and, you know, refer this channel to your friends. Thanks a lot.